بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله ارسله ربه رحمه للعالم اما بعد فان اصدق الحديث كتاب الله تعالى وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم الا وان كل محدثه بدعه كل بدعه ضلاله وكل ضلاله في النار وصيكم ونفسي بتقوى الله سبحانه وتعالى in the name of Allah the most gracious most merciful all praise is due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we praise him and we seek his forgiveness and assistance and we take refuge in him from the evils of ourselves and our shortcomings whomever Allah guides there is none to misguide him and whomever Allah leaves to go astray there is none to guide him we bear witness that there is none worthy of our worship except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the creator, the sustainer, and the cherisher of this universe. And we bear witness that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the seal of the prophets and the final messenger to all humanity. I greet you with the greeting of Islam. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Um, I'm honored and pleased to be here in the city of Durham. I like to be here. I like your masjid, I like your sound system. <laughs> um, there's a lot of Islamic heritage and Arabic heritage in this uh, city. On the way I say, uh, I saw the city of Salem, and Salem is an Arabic word which means safe um, and secure. The word Durham, some say it's taken from the Arabic word Durham, Dinar and Dirham. The word Diyuk is the plural of the word Dik in Arabic, which is rooster. So it's an Arabic word. So the list can go on and on. Why do we talk about the concept of khilaf or disagreement or difference in Islam? In less than two weeks, we will have the month of Ramadan. And Alhamdulillah, this is the month of blessings and favors and grace of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The month of the Quran, the month of forgiveness and so on and so forth. But it is also the month of disunity amongst the Muslims. Um, you see some brothers in some masjid, and I've heard about this. One of the brothers was visiting a masjid in Texas. He's a member of our community. When he came back, he said, you know, brother, he went to pray, to pray Taraweeh in one of the masajid on the first night of Ramadan, but there was literally a fight between the people in the masjid. Some say, brother, we pray 20 rakah. Some say, no, no, we pray 11. Brother, bid'ah, bid'ah, 20 is bid'ah. They had a big fight. They agreed to pray 11 rakahs, no problem. Then they had another disagreement. Some say, we need to finish the Qur'an in Ramadan. Some say, no, 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 no. We just need to pray a few rakahs, go home, call it a day, take it easy. There are differences. In this situation, the Imam, the only thing the Imam you know, can do is to ask the people by their love for Allah, their love for the Prophet, their respect for the masjid, not to, to bleed on the carpet of the masjid when they fight. <laughs> because the Imam can't do anything. He will keep citing verses from the Quran, a hadith from the Prophet to respect the masjid and so on and so forth. Nobody is listening. Um, linguistically, the word ikhtilaf and khilaf are related. They mean difference, disagreement, variation and diversity. Uh, we will not be talking about the difference between what is right and what is wrong, what is halal and what is haram, because this is very clear to sound minds. People of understanding will know this very easily. So we will not be talking, for example, if Allah exists or doesn't exist. Allah is one or Allah is three. We don't want to talk about this because it is very clear. We will be talking about, you know, diversity or variation in opinion and both opinions are acceptable in Islam. We will not talk for long about differences among scholars because this needs a different you know, lecture. 
we will be basically be talking about you know differences like everyday you know life differences like differences between a husband and wife a friend and his friend differences within the community regarding different different issues but first we start by citing a verse from the Quran that talks about variation and diversity as being a blessing from Allah واختلافي <coughs> السنتكم وألوانكم إن في ذلك لآيات لقوم يعلمون. In the variation, the diversity of your tongues and the diversity of your colors is a sign from God. Indeed, in this there is a sign. This is a blessing for the people who have sound understanding. This is a blessing. Imagine. If the whole world was uniform, the people have the same color, the people eat the same food every day, the people have the same culture, they speak the same language, and so on and so forth. So there's no white, there's no black, there's no lovely Indian Pakistani food, you know, nothing. It's only one culture. Don't you think it will be a boring world? Alhamdulillah, it's a blessing that we have differences, variations, diversity. And Allah says in the Quran that the differences of colors you have, the differences in tongues, that you speak English, Arabic, German, French, this is a blessing from Allah. We have to cherish, we have to respect. And also, if you have one color, one food, one language, you know, people eat, uh, you know, Dunkin' Donuts every day, one culture. Some businesses will run out of business, like tourism, for example, translation, money exchange, and of course, tourism, go where, see what. There's nothing to see, it is only one culture. So, again, variation is something um, good, it's a blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We read in the Books of Fiqh. For example, if you read the introduction to uh, the book of Fiqh Sunnah by Sheikh Sayyid Sabak, he will say, for example, that at some point in the Muslim history, some scholars, you know, used to focus on fine details of Fiqh, and they used to have a lot of differences. All the way, I mean, it got so ugly. At some point, some of the scholars say that it is not allowed for someone who follows the Shafi'i Mazhab to marry a sister who follows the Hanafi Mazhab. Wallahi, it's in the, in the book of Sayyid Sabah. They say because the, it is acceptable in the Mazhab of Imam Shafi'i to say, Ana mu'minun insha'Allah. Whereas in the opinion of Abu Hanifa, you know, Shafi'i, you know, in the Shafi'i opinion, you can say, I will be a believer insha'Allah, if Allah wills. Whereas this is not acceptable in the Hanafi school. So, they should not get married. This is nonsense. So people should not be, you know, stooping to this level of thinking and understanding. Of course, we see brothers, you know, bro this brother who is sitting next to me in the Salah is, you know, is making me lose my focus in the Salah. Why? He is moving his finger too much in the Tashahud. I can't focus. <laughs> he will have to do something about his finger. Okay. Don't move your finger too much. Brother, you know, I'm not going gonna, I'm not gonna pray in this masjid again. Why? You know, the brother, when after the salah, he raises his hand in the dua like this. I can't focus with people's hands raised up like this in dua. What do you want him to do? To put down his hands and pray, you know, to make dua in his heart. Okay. SubhanAllah. When we read the Sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ, we see that some of the Sahaba had different opinions you know, from one another. There was an opinion, one Sahabi would say something different and both of them were acceptable. And even the Prophet ﷺ himself would have an opinion and one of the Sahaba would come with a different opinion and the Prophet ﷺ would leave his own opinion and take the opinion of the Sahabi. 